It is a really pretty day today. Very beautiful. So I wanted to do this one outside. Updates on my hair. I'm still on it. water fountain that you're hearing there is the beautiful Edinburgh Castle right above it is a gorgeous day outside today it is as you can see it is cold it is I think about 48 degrees at the moment or maybe 50 there's no rain in the forecast I can't take all the rain. I, I just can't. I can't. So, so like I said, we're gonna get into it. Today's video is about my life in Scotland, and I'm gonna start from the very beginning. So I've been getting a lot of questions about my move and how I made the move, why I made the move, how did I begin doing it, and let me just let you know, it did not start with me just up. And that's not how it started. The decision didn't come easy for me to move, and it's been five years. Should I move? Should I not move? Should I move? Should I not move? And with that, let me tell you something. When you hear God give you instructions and tell you to do something, and you don't do it or you hesitate to do it, believe you me, there are consequences. So, with that being said, how I made the decision to move from tiny Virgin Islands all the way to the United Kingdom in Scotland. Have I ever visited Scotland before moving? No. Did I ever visit the United Kingdom before moving? No. I had never been here before, never visited before, and everyone was like, so you're going to visit the place first before you decide to go? And between 2013 and 2017, I kept getting whether it was a dream that I'm going to be living someplace else or that I need to be living someplace else or just someone, you know, coming to me and saying, have you ever thought about moving or... But, you know, I kept, every time it came, I thought about it for a bit, but not long enough for me to make any kind of move or put any kind of plans in place or anything like that so the back of my brain that kept going further and further and further back 2017 september hurricane irma you guys know what hurricane irma did to the virgin islands and i almost lost everything i lost the majority of what i had the place was destroyed so i only kept two pictures of any evidence of hurricane Alma or hurricane maria because i didn't want to deal with the visible evidence of what had happened i have one of my son feeling some type of way because of the british army that came in to help and i have another one of him just being as brave and as big as i needed him to be at that time to help with everything and if you look closely in the background you can see some of the destruction that happened but not all of it so I was there, I managed to clean it up, make it livable because now the entire island is destroyed. There's only a few places that's still livable and people living in them. So where am I going to go? You know. And then two weeks after, it was Hurricane Maria, both Category 5 her, um, hurricanes. I lost electricity to the building and we didn't have running water. That was life. Candles, uh, what else? Lamps, um, flashlights, no running water. That was life from September up to the following year, February. Because the landlord now needed to fix the place. At 
I couldn't find anywhere else to go. I couldn't find a place to rent because again, people were still in the process of fixing their places back. My son, myself, and my niece, we all moved in. We're in my dad's house. And there, that's just a two bedroom. It's big, I must say. It's a two bedroom. In that house was my dad, um, one, two, three brothers, myself, my niece, my son. Seven of us. Okay? That wasn't the best time and my son was not happy with that. But you know, I, I stayed there for as long as I could and I tried my best to make it work. But being in a house closed up for so long, I mean not closed up, but you know, you're in a in, in a space where it's so many of you, and because it's so many of you, the space becomes smaller, as big as it is. It you know, so I decided that it was time to move and then one of my brothers and I got into a fight. We got into an argument and I decided if, if I don't move, one are we going to kill somebody. And instead of letting that happen, I say, you know what, let's find a piece. I was speaking to a friend who's like a mom to me and she said, well, she has a one she has one of our one bedrooms that someone is actually moving out of now so once she moves then you can go in oh it's a puppy hello who do you belong to can i touch you it's a puppy i want to show you guys the puppy look it's a puppy hi he's still there he's just chilling so where was i yeah, I can't remember how long I stayed there. So anyway, you know, her place became available and I moved. And this place was really small. It was not enough space for my son and I, but it was workable until. And I knew that I needed to start looking for a place, but I had a new problem now where because of the hurricanes, because of all the destruction, because of you know, insurance and you know, everyone having to fix their places back and all of that, you know, not so good stuff. All of the apartments in the BVI were expensive. I could not find a decent two bedroom apartment for under $2,000 a month. And I could not afford anything higher than that i couldn't even afford two thousand a month okay so at this point i really started thinking should i move should i go someplace else like where all this time mind you god is still there and god is still talking god is still saying i need you to move and god is talking to me through different ways as well my dreams again people talking to me again just stuff i've been hearing again the preach word in church you know about moving about going forward about all of that stuff so here i was in this really 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 i can't stress enough how small the apartment was the apartment is fitting for one person so i guess now because i wasn't listening to god he stepped in and some stuff started happening so one night I'm in this same small apartment and I'm sleeping and I'm hearing my neighbor um, just kept calling for the landlord upstairs and she kept calling him this is about 2 in the morning so I woke up and oh my sleep was so good that night guys my sleep was so nice I would never forget that they're Spanish so they're always noisy I just thought it was one of these noisy nights they just partying and you know that's I'm listening to her just calling for the landlord upstairs and she's like yes 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 what if juice ain't hearing you go sleep what are you doing I heard her run from her door she ran to the end of the corridor and I'm hearing her screaming his name still and I was like is it that something is wrong with the husband or I was like what, what's wrong so I listened to her she ran back into the room again and then it's when I heard her say oh my god oh my god she's Spanish again right she was like oh my what's up with these dogs 
So anyway, she started screaming, oh my yard, oh my yard. I was like, okay, something is wrong. So I got up and I decided to open, you know, go outside and, and ask her what is happening. Let me tell you something, when I opened that door, I saw this fire just blazing coming out of the window. So I ran back inside. I didn't know where she had gone because I couldn't hear her anymore and I was just frightened. I didn't know what to do. I thought that my son was behind me running with me until I got to the end of the corridor where it was safe enough and I looked back and this child was nowhere behind me and I started shouting and screaming. And then there comes Kiani just like nobody's business just waltzing. So our electricity was connected and so that knocked the power out of my apartment. Fire truck came, lot of neighbors came, some of the neighbors came, my brother came to help and what's not. It was clear for us to go back into at least our apartment and sleep. It was maybe 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. It was traumatic when we got up in the morning, everybody was just in a state. The lady was safe, she wasn't harmed but they did lose everything. So here I was again in an apartment, no electricity because the fire now knocked out the power to my building. That now forced me to start again looking for a place, couldn't find anything within my budget and don't come for me, don't laugh at me, okay? My budget for a two bedroom apartment comfortably was between seven to eight hundred dollars in Tartola no that's crazy because I told some people about it I told them you know this is my budget and this is what I need I have a big son I need a two-bedroom apartment everybody laugh at me you know yeah where you gonna find that from you might find that don't you might talk to some of my church people um, who are supposed to have faith because I'm thinking I believe in God and I have enough faith to believe that God is going to grab me what I need and not only what I need what I want you know but down to some of my very church brothers and sisters were just knocking my idea left right and center of me finding a place at this price so i remember saying to one of them watch i am going to find a two bedroom at seven and all i said was at 700 i didn't say 700 dollars and this is where it gets funny I just said, I'm going to find a two bedroom at 700 and you will see. And I remember her saying, well, when you find it, let me know and let God know I need one too. After not finding anything and realizing that, you know, my son is getting older and this is, this, this is starting to hit a point now where if you don't make a drastic move, like, you know, I don't even know how to explain it and, I, and this is where I really began to hear God before. Like if I, if I tell you that I wasn't sure that it was God before, I knew. Oh my hair is still keeping <laughs> By this time, <laughs> I knew that God was saying, I need you to move, I need you to grow, and in order for you to grow, I need you to go someplace where I can plant you. And so began this ridiculous faith walk. I decided, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna make this move. So I have a non-biological little sister that lives here in Scotland, and I have a former co-worker who's a friend that also lives here in Scotland. So I decided I'm going to make this move. And the thought of me actually saying it was just daunting it was so frightening and i was so nervous i was like you really can move to this place yeah so i decided if if god wants me to move i have to trust and believe that he is going to take me all the way through and you know, I have to just trust and believe that he's going to take care of me. So I told my closest, like really close family, but it didn't get real in my mind 
until I had to sit down with the head of my department where I work. I was contemplating should I tell her, should I not tell her that I'm, you know, I'm going to leave. So by the time I made the decision, now this was last year, May I think is when I made the final decision to go and then between June and July is where I sat down with her. And the plan was to move within a year. So that would be this year, June, July. So when I got into the meeting, of course the question came, what are your plans for the future? So I said, well, actually, can I have something that I'd like to share with you? And she said, oh, okay. Am I getting a granddaughter or a grandson? I was like, no, stop, no. I am planning on leaving the BVI and moving to the United Kingdom. Well, when I said it, at that moment, it just went off in my brain like, you're moving. You are moving. You know, and it became surreal like it became despite I had already said it to my close friends my really close family when I said it to her for some reason I don't know if because well you know this is your job this is your boss I don't know what it was but there was something about me telling that made it real like made it you know so of course I was still nervous guys I was nervous right up until the day I left so that was June July when I told her and the plan was to leave within one year um, so fast forward a bit now into 2019 we're coming on to the end of the year this corona thing you know started when the right started and it was no threat at that time and now we're coming into um, 2020 and 2020 just started as if it needed to just be in the garbage one time you know everybody start asking are you sure you go in I mean by the time we hit into our lockdown which was for us in March you sure you still want to do this and what's not and at that time I started questioning well God you know what are we doing and the only words that I kept hearing was, have faith. And I said, okay, have faith, but you're not telling me to go or not to go. So I had some conversations with God where I, I just wasn't hearing anything. So I said, okay, you know, in mad, I didn't expect us to be here in this place still with Corona. I did not expect it. I don't think anybody expected it. So I said, okay, um, you know, we're coming down. I'm going to start, I'm going to like make the preparation to move in July. So I'm looking into the, um, you know, the job, the jobs here, the, the, the work, workplaces here. I started looking for apartments here and when, I couldn't believe how cheap they were as in. I remember when I found a three bedroom for 700 pounds. I think back on. The conversation I had with the friend and when I told her this puppy is just here sitting by me guys let me show you this puppy again he just came back there he is and he's just chilling so anyway <laughs> it brought me back to the conversation I had when I said that you know I'm gonna have faith and I'm going to find an apartment for 700 I did, but it was 700 pounds, and I was like, God, I'm going to take my glasses off for a bit because I realized they, they're not shades, it's glasses, and they are very dirty. Oh. See, that's why half of them I can't see nothing. So, yeah. So when I found it, I thought back on, you know, the conversation that we had, and I was like, are you funny? That's what I thought like to myself. I was like, God, you funny. You you got jokes. Because I did say and they put it out in the atmosphere that I'm going to find a two bedroom for say he's good. <laughs> um they're looking for their dog. <laughs> so 
you know, I did put it in the atmosphere that I'm going to find an apartment, a two bedroom for 700. I found a two bedroom, I found some three bedrooms. Let's see, we did the conversion. What is 700 pounds in US? It was, guys, it still was not $2,000 and up. Oh, I think back on that conversation, I just thought, well, God, you, you, you got jokes. You got, like, you got funny being, you got jokes. Corona is just going rampant worldwide and here I am still packing stuff still preparing to sell stuff still because God didn't say to me change your mind don't go and I was waiting for him to say don't go yet it's almost as if after he after God kept saying to me have faith that was it and God just went silent and I was like yo this ain't funny like you ain't funny right now because look at what's going on so I decided okay God is bigger than corona God is bigger than any disease God is this is a God I believe in and if I don't believe that God is bigger than corona then why am I believing in this God so you know I continue to pack I continue to sell stuff I and all this time guys when I tell you I am nervous my friend was my friend who lives here my former co-worker who lives here now she was a big help I must say that she helped me out with like um, you know finding different jobs um, places that were hiring and she was the one who kind of taught me you know what to do what not to do uh places like apartments and so on and they don't say apartments here flats you know different flats and she just kept sending information upon information like from the time i told her that i had made the decision she was on it like white on rice okay and yeah, she was a big help i must say so I did ask her if I could stay with her when I come to, you know, until I get myself settled, until I get everything done and she said of course and it wasn't even a question for her. So that was a big help and I just continued to do, you know, what I had to do and the word at that time and the word now still is faith, okay? So that is how I made the decision. I believe that God allowed all those series of things to happen in order to push me to make the decision or in order to, in, I would say encourage not to push because God is not a God that forces you to do stuff. Um, you don't have to follow God if you don't want to. You don't have to do anything that God tells you to do if you don't want to. And you know, it's your choice, it's your decision but understand this this and this is my belief don't nobody come for me this is what i believe if you don't follow and do what god is asking you to do and this is what i started with there are consequences what is my consequence i had a hard time when i finally got here trying to get stuff done because of corona and just think about it if i had made the, the step uh, made the move a lot earlier i would have already been here when this whole corona business started and startup wouldn't have been as hard there are some stuff that i'm still trying to get done um that i can't do yet because of corona there are a lot of restrictions um but you know i'm i am getting it done and making it work this definitely was um an excellent move it was a great move I mean I wouldn't lie to any of you this was a great move and I am really glad that I made the decision and I if these bugs fly over me and poop on my head these bugs have no manners in this place okay so you know here I am 
and I'm glad I followed. I wish I had done it a lot sooner, but I'm here. Still trusting, still having faith, still believing in God. And I would encourage any of you, if you want to take this step and want to make that big bold move, go for it. Just look at your pros and cons, you know, have a conversation with God first before you do anything else. Have a conversation with God. Don't be afraid. If it's fair holding you back, don't be afraid because here I am. I never, never, never thought that I would have left the BBI and flown across the world to a country that I never visited before. I have never been this far before. But, you know, I'm glad I did it. It was a huge step. Selling everything that you own and moving, it can, I could understand it can be daunting because when I told my son, he was the first person I told. When I told him he's into um, sports cars specifically, like this child could break down any car, he could look at the, the lights of a vehicle and tell you exactly what the vehicle is, right? He's into automobiles. So when I told him where we were going, he started researching um, stuff like that and the opportunities that he would have here and he got really excited like he was super excited he was stoked about moving here until a little young lady came into the picture I was like dude really you choose now to, to become extra close friends with this young lady so you know after that he didn't want to move he didn't want to move but the day when we left we cried both of us cried but that child cried so for me to come here let me just tell you guys how, how I had to travel. So it was hard. I had to get special permission from Department of Health, um, tourist board. I had to do all kind of thing in order to get permission to leave because the borders were still closed. So, you know, I got all of that done and what's not. So in order for me to leave, I had to take, I had to charter a private boat. So it cost me, again, this is the consequences now. Part of the consequences. It took me quite a lot financially in order to get stuff done um, should I even say that because it worked out in some areas and then it didn't in some areas so the airline ticket we bought, out, we bought one way tickets from St. Thomas all the way into Heathrow and it was only $680 versus maybe if it wasn't Corona it would have been maybe a lot more I'm not sure you know that allowed space for us to spend money elsewhere where I needed to so from Tortola to St. Thomas I had to charter a boat because none of the ferry companies were taking people across only cargo and only the private charters were allowed by the government to take people across once permission was granted so we left on July 12th from St. Thomas, I made, when I, once I got to St. Thomas, we made our way down to the airport and I took a flight from St. Thomas Airport into Miami. We took British Airways from Miami into London Heathrow and again, the gate was almost empty, the plane was almost empty. My son and I, we were able to stretch out in our own rows and, you know, get a good comfortable sleep. By the time we got into Heathrow, it was after 10 a.m. the next day, so July 13th. And from there, we took a train, from the airport actually, we took a train, went into the train station. And then from there, we took our final train from, I don't know the name of the train station, I think it's King's Cross. I, I'm still trying to get familiar with the names of places and stuff here. Ah, I'm cold. Um, we took a train that was about five hours and some long before we got into Scotland. In total, from the time we left the house to Scotland, it was a total of 30 plus hours of traveling. Um, somewhere between 35 hours to 37 hours 
that's how long it took us to get there. There are shorter flights, yes, there are shorter routes, yes, but you know, in order for me to get here during lockdown, during quarantine time, you know, I had to take certain routes in order to do so. So, here we are. I think, I think I'm gonna do another video because this one, I don't want it to be too long. So I think I'm gonna do another one, um, just basically explaining my preparation process and all of what I've done. Because there are a lot of people that's asking me, um, you know, how did you do it? What did you do? Because there are persons who, who want to do the same thing, but they are either afraid or they just don't even know where to start or how to begin doing that. So I think I'm going to do that video, just explaining my entire process in what I did and the plans I put in place and so on. So again, if you want to move and you feel that the move is the best move for you, don't let fear be the reason why you don't make the move, okay? Here's what else I would also say to you. If you do decide to make the decision to move and you are positive that this is what you want, one of the things that God said to me too was shut your mouth. Ain't everybody need to know what it is you're going to do, okay? Don't tell everyone what you are going to do. There are some persons in your life who you are very close with and you're going to want to let them know. But there are some persons where you need to wave at them goodbye when you're on the plane, okay? Because some people would make you doubt your decision so bad. There are some people who just can't see you picking yourself up and making such a move that they themselves would want to move, but they don't have. I'm doing a video flight that they don't have the guts to make. There are some people who just don't have the, the level of faith that you would have in yourself for you to make that move. Some people can't comprehend it. Some people's brain, their mind, they don't have the capacity to believe in what you believe in. So, watch who you talk to, okay? Watch who you're, you're giving your information to. Watch who you're giving your ideas to. Everybody doesn't need to know what it is you're about to do. Trust me and take it from me. I'm speaking from experience. Everybody doesn't need to know what you are going to do and what your plans are. Like I said, there are some persons you're going to have to tell, I'm sure. But there are some persons, whether you take a, a train, whether you have to take a plane, whether you have to take a boat, you wait until you're on that means of transportation. And that's when you leave. Bye. By the way, I'm leaving, and some of them don't even need to know until you reach. When you reach is when you tell people, okay? And you have some, you still don't even need to let them know that you left. I come in up close and I tell them y'all, shut your mouth, okay? That's just how God said it to me when I was telling one of my church sisters that I'm leaving. The things that she had to say about me leaving, about Corona, about me not making it, I, I, that's a bad move, I shouldn't do that, I ain't gonna wear going, the BVI is good now, I don't need to leave. Shut up. There are some people who just don't have the capacity to believe in what you believe in. There are some people who are going to tear down your dreams and your beliefs if, if, if you dare to mention what it is you're about to do. Everybody needs to keep that to yourself. And some of these very same people who are going to discourage you from doing what it is you want to do, they may not even go offer to help, okay? They, uh, some of them could very well help you with what it is you want to do, but eh, they would not even offer to help. Mind you, they're gonna encourage you to stay in your bad situation stay in your rough time but they would never hand you a dollar or a pound or a quid to help or pay so whatever your currency is to help you so watch who you're talking to 
watch who you're giving your information to and just make your move make your move in silence that's key make your move in silence there are some there are some persons know who would call me or who would send me messages hey just checking on you how's it going acting all concern and what's not and later on you get another phone call or you get a message with this person here saying that you should have never gone and this person saying that you know you're not gonna make it and they're just waiting for you to run come back home because they ain't walking out ain't nothing but a set of snakes in the grass so be careful with who you're talking to okay keep your information to yourself make your move in silence and allow your greatness to speak loud okay that's it for this video um once again i wish nothing but god's blessings on you guys and i hope to see you on the next video do not forget to comment like subscribe share this video um i know it may it's going to be helpful for for someone if if only one person i'm okay okay so i'll see you guys and thank you for watching bye